my father's father, he lived on the ridge on Hans Island, which is a, a, the main line of houses down the front side of the bay. They knocked his house down board by board, brought it to Crystal and built it on Maryland Avenue, rebuilt it board by board. He basically they came here and recreated the same lifestyle that he knew. They had houses on Maryland Avenue. They had a garden in the back of their house. Uh, they fished and crabbed and oystered. It's the same thing they did on Allen. They just, same lifestyle, just moved to higher ground. And that's what I think nothing's changed. And this is what we're going to do. You see, you say, well, we got climate change. What are we going to do? We're not going to do but so much. We do what we physically can. Basically, we're going to move to higher ground. That's my plan. I'm going to move to higher ground and keep on fishing and crabbing and oyster. You know, this is all. I don't know what else to do. If you believe the scientists, and I believe the scientists, they got no reason to lie. You look at the science, you're, you're headed for a two, three foot rise in sea level in the next hundred years, you know. And people say, well, I don't, I'm going to be here. I'm not going to worry about it. But I got children and grandchildren. I got children and grandchildren. They live here. We got a responsibility to have a lifestyle that's sustainable here. Big parts of Crisfield are going to be flooded. These people moved at their own expense with no government help. They just uprooted and rent, bought they on Maryland Avenue, they bought little building lots and moved their houses into here and just re recreated the same lifestyle out of Crisfield as they were doing there, fish, crab, and oyster. The problem is, what do you do in a coastal community that you know is getting worse and worse and worse? And uh, so you, know, you only got a few years. You know, I don't, I'm, I don't have any answers, but uh, it's coming. We know it's coming. It came to us 100 years ago. They had no access to scientific data. They had no, but you can see the bay's moving up on you every year. You know, you've lived there for generations and it's coming in closer every year. And, you know, you don't have to be too smart to see it coming. And it's coming here. It's come, come, Chris feels, you know, all the low-lying areas is coming. Parts of Norfolk get flooded at 10, 15, 20 times a year. It's too low. Should you even be building there? You know, so, and how do you handle it? That's above my pay grade, but, um, and I guess it's not comparable because they weren't so heavily invested in the land that they couldn't get up and go. And you got, when you got a whole city, what do you do with the whole city? I don't know what you do with the whole city. It's got to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you do with Tangier and Smith Island? I don't know. There's no way, they're not three feet, they're not three feet above sea level. They're, they probably don't, I don't know if they contemplate it like my grandfather did. I'm not sure they contemplate what's happening to them. Um, I know that they do because they're fishermen and crabbers and oarsmen and they work on the bay every day. They see it. They have to see it. They understand it. Uh, part of it is they're not wealthy and they don't really have a plan because they don't have the money or resources to deal with it. So they just go until they can't. And at some point they're going to have to move. Uh, they're just going to have to move. Everybody goes to higher ground, just like my grandfather.